Where we are here at the, I believe it's a Rayburn yes. Senate Office Building, right? Yes. Okay. So, what is the event, and how did you get to be here? So this is um, a Congressional Visits Day reception, and the idea is to let members of Congress know the importance of science, the importance of scientific research, and make sure that we continue to get it funded. Mm -hmm. um, I personally work for the American Physical Society. It's the professional organization for physicists, and one of the things we do is get people of all ages interested in physics. Mm -hmm. And when I say all ages, I don't mean you know kids that parents tag along. I mean mm -hmm. we have things that adults like as well, um, and then things for kids too. And one of our biggest programs is a series of comic books about our laser superhero Spectra. She battles such villains as Misalignment, General Relativity, and Maxwell Steeman. And the idea is that all of her powers are things that lasers actually do. So by the end, the kids have learned something about lasers, but we didn't actually tell them what we were teaching them. Mm. Um, and then when she fights the uh, unfortunate General Relativity, mm. by the end they've learned some force in motion. And so different comics have different themes. We've done um, lasers, the history of lasers, force in motion, thermodynamics, and we're about to come out with one that is all hydrodynamics. Um, oh. And so it's a story about her in that story and then accidentally learn some physics. Um, okay, and you also have an associate here who's helping people with the understanding of the program, etc., right? So this is Brian. Mm -hmm. He manages our outreach website, uh, physicscentral.com. And on Physics Central, we have things for everybody. We have a blog that's geared towards the 20s and 30s mm -hmm. set um, mm -hmm. that has cool physics articles. I mean, and really what counts as Physics Central blog worthy mm -hmm. is anything we found really Oh, okay. So if we're interested in something and think there's physics involved, we will write something about it. And if we think it's cool, other people tend to as well. <laughs> well, that's true. And then you have the sort of the um, responders, right? So people who will sign on to your blog, yes. they can interact with you. Then. Yep. Um, we get tons of comments. We've had we have a blog posts go viral once every six months or so. Um, we'll get hundreds of thousands of hits and hundreds and hundreds of comments. Um, which is wonderful, you know. The neat thing about blogs and kind of today's news is that it's not a one-way street anymore. Um, you post a news story and now you get interaction from the people reading it and that's unique. Um, and that tells us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, and we can engage back with them. So if there's something that's unclear, they can ask us and we can tell. It's not just informing, it's really engaging. And that's what we want to do with all of our programs, is this engagement, it's not just informing. So you have a more constructive user experience, so to speak. Yes, okay. yes. We want to make sure that people are involved. And, you know, you can tell someone something, and that doesn't mean they're going to get it, but as soon as you start talking to them, it's a different story. Or even when you demonstrate it to them, right? Exactly. Okay. And one of the things we do, um, one of the print things we do is a series of posters that ask interesting questions about this. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to get people thinking and then go to our website with the answers. And mm -hmm. lots of people have done posters with fun facts about physics, but that doesn't engage anybody's mind. It mm -hmm. just tells them something. They don't have to start thinking about the answer and get that little brain mm -hmm. word that makes them go to our sure. site. Mm -hmm. um, and so we do that. We have on our website a lot of at-home experiments where people can go and take stuff they find in their kitchen and do some physics with it. Um, and one of the things we try to make sure we do with these experiments is show people that physics is all around them. So it's not something that's done in a lab up the street. It's done in your kitchen, you know. It's done in your garage. Everything around you has something that's going on. So we want to stress that as well. So when someone drops a utensil <laughs> and you can talk about the rate of descent right. and all of those things. But you can also talk about with like a fork. How's a fork going to flip over different than a knife? You know, a fork is going to fall differently than a knife or a feather or a rock or a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and talking about more than just the standard base level of things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone's flipped a tennis racket up in the air or a cereal box or something. Mm -hmm. But if you throw it one way, it does one thing. Another way, it does another. And being able to address those small differences that a lot of times aren't talked about. Wow. Speaking of... Uh Small differences. Maybe we ought to try one of those little hors d'oeuvres over there. They're quite tasty. That could make a difference in our mood in just a little while. Here at the Rayburn House Office Building, they treat us right, right? <laughs> we got food and drink. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Wow, that looks great. Yeah, they're very. Uh, 
people have been coming around with food all day, so it's Wonderful. Been nice. Well, you've been working hard. I wanted to just see what was on the table. Sure. You've been giving away some trinkets, yes. and you have an example of one right on your lapel. Yes, and I can show you how they're made. Mm -hmm. This is what's called an LED, a light emitting diode. Mm -hmm. um, they're used in exit signs, stop lights, you'll see them everywhere. Mm -hmm. What's really cool about them is they produce a lot of light, use little energy, and don't heat up. Wow. So we've got a tiny battery here, it's 3 volts. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have to pierce the fabric. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's a neat way to be able to hold a pin on and advertise our website. And it's all lit up and blinking, which people really Exactly. Like. So here it's okay to stare at a woman's chest. <laughs> it's such a pleasure to meet you. The last thing I wanted to ask you was about Spectra the character. Yes. What is, what is, how did Spectra come to be and who's the artist on that? Um, so I write them and then we have an artist, Carrie Johnson, mm -hmm. who his office is down the hall for mine and he draws them. Mm -hmm. Muscles? Yes. <laughs> um, so she's a normal middle school girl, but we talked a lot about how to create a comic that's engaging for girls as well. Mm. What type of superhero to have, what colors to use, what art styles, um, to figure out what they what they think would really attract girls specifically. And so we created Spectra from that. Um, and the, the red chucks um, are my favorite part, the red tennis shoes, because I wear Chucks a lot around the office. I'm wearing red. I see red. Yeah. You're a design celeb if ever there was one. That's beautiful. Um, but I wear red chucks around the office regularly, and so our artists just threw them in there. I think that's kind of cool. Ah. So who's your favorite character on mass media, would you say? Oh, that's an interesting one. Now, I'm going to guess it's uh, Polly from CSI, the woman that does... Oh, really? I really like... Um, I think one of my favorite shows is Bones, like, right. It's um, a medical drama, right? Yeah, it's a uh, forensic anthropology, but I really like that the lead character is a woman who is extremely smart and not apologetic for it. Oh. And that's rare. She's just like, yeah, I am the smartest one in the room. That's just the way it is. But and somehow sensual in her own way. <laughs> but that's not the focus at all. Oh, I understand that, but there is a kind of a, I guess, a, a sort of image that women who are quote unquote nerdy or not necessarily attractive, and you right. can be both. Right, and right? she was, and I mean, they've done some interesting things with the show. One mm -hmm. of my favorites is that she had a kid on the show. Both mm -hmm. the actress had, a, you know, had a, mm -hmm. a baby and the um, and the character. Mm -hmm. And I liked that because they didn't only they they didn't hide her pregnancy. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't kind of a fake thing. It and just happened. You watched the se you watched this whole season as she went through having a real kid. You know, mm -hmm. she, you watched her lose the baby weight. They didn't hide her somewhere. They didn't treat her like the normal starlet actress. And I loved that they represented that, that you can be a working mom and it's fine. You know, you can have two working parents and everyone works it out and it's great. Yep. And, and she didn't have to take off in the program. Right. And it's 
wonderful. It was wonderful to see. That. Okay, well that's all. That's part of the lesson, right? Yeah. What happens naturally? Yes. And what man creates sometimes too, right? And even if that doesn't seem natural, it's a natural evolution, right? Right. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Spectra heats up. It's sure to make it around to some of the high schools, I guess, or middle school. Middle school middle before school. we get to high school. Yep. Yeah, but school. sometimes with high school themes. Right. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> more Could middle be. school. Okay. More yes. middle school. Okay, well, thanks for uh, sharing with us. So we can get more information. You have, a, obviously, an online presence. Uh, PhysicsCentral.com.